Russell Southwood, I run Balancing Act, which is a consultancy and research company that does telecoms, internet and media in sub-Saharan Africa. We do a variety of different things. I've been doing that for 15 years and when I first started doing that back in 2000, there were hundreds of people or thousands of people in every African country on the internet. So in Nigeria, my memory is that there were 2,000 people on the internet in a country of 150 million people at that time. So now we have hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people on the internet in different African countries. So the question in terms of disruptive opportunities is not if, but what. And then they'd be touting this as well is, is Faricom's um, and PESA platform. And the PESA, um, M obviously stands for, 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 for mobile and PESA is money in Swahili. And this was launched by, back in 2007 off the back of their, um, their mobile infrastructure. Um, and it enables you to send micropayments, small payments, small transactions, pay for goods and services, um, send some money to a friend, pay for a meal, whatever it might be, um, using, using this platform via SMS. And it's extremely, it's really well suited to the market. And, and, and the numbers speak for themselves. 17 million users in Kenya. It's about two thirds of the adult population use this. Um, and it provides access to the financial system for people who otherwise wouldn't ordinarily have a bank account. They wouldn't have access to a local high street branch, wouldn't be able to go and use that, would be reliant on cash and all the security issues that come with that. So what it's enabled us to do through technology is to really change the way in which people use money, pay for products, and, and add to that level of, of security and mobility as well. Um, and PESA actually accounts for 43%, according to some numbers, of Kenya GDP, so it's a huge amount of money flowing through the system. I mean, it, it's it's 4.2 trillion Kenya shillings. I try to work that out in dollars and, and struggle, but it's a, it's, a, it's a huge amount of money. And off the back of that, expanding into new territories throughout East Africa and, 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 further, and further afield as well. Um, with that said, when you look forward to the future, content is content is content. The means of it being uh, distributed changes. So first there was cable in the US, and that got really, really big. Then TTH came, which is essentially Sky. Um, in the US is DirecTV, obviously, uh, Canal Plus in, 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 in France and so on. Um, everybody talked about the internet being that next platform, but at the time there were very few people who were building for it. Um, our ambition was we need to get there early, so we needed to sort of take some of the, the pain and the early enough from trying to develop a business there. But our ambition was that in the next 15 to 20 years, where would people be watching content? And uh, the key insight was. The vast majority of people who we met then in 2010 had never seen the desktop because they didn't need to. It was all sort of smartphones. As the phones have got much more smarter and cheaper, um, we're seeing like an absolute explosion of people actually using um, the uh, actually using their smartphones and and, and obviously the, the Android operating system. We're here to talk about disruptive technologies. Is disruption happens in particular ways and in particular places? So if you look at Africa, it's not a country, it's 50 plus countries. So some of them are much further ahead in terms of the internet. Some have much more developed economies and some have much more widely spread wealth than others. So you need to think about that. The other one is actually going back to the banking example. The internet deals with people at a certain level in the pyramid who have money. And it's easy to build markets out of those people who have money. The more interesting challenge is those people who have only a little money, and so are somewhere further down the pyramid, and how one can build innovation and disruption at that kind of level. So that's the conversation I want to have with the panelists here. So first, my first question to um, Fidelis, yeah. since you're new up in the discussion, is actually, how would you think about disruption, innovation in Africa, what are the kinds of things that you would you think about and would be looking at if, in terms of telling this audience about what's happening? Well, I suppose um, the thing happening in Africa is that a lot of people who are exposed to um, what is obtainable in the West in terms of uh, a particular lifestyle, the lifestyle is, is, is a basic um, fundamental when it comes to disruption whether it's lifestyle in fashion, or consumption, or equipment, or uh, what 
whatever form of cons cons um, goods or services is consumed. Um, in the West, there's a sense or a tendency to want to replicate that in Africa. So it comes down to the means um, by which those um, um, goods or services are consumed. Jason, you were saying in your presentation that you made several investment bets and not all of them went right. So that gives you a kind of very practical view of what was disruptive and what wasn't in the Nigerian context. What worked and what didn't work and why? So I think probably, so there is the 5 percentile who everybody sees and there is the base to so the 95 percentile. So when we were website focused, we were literally in that 5 percentile. Um, but in reality, the people who really watch Nollywood are like the base. The lower you go, go down the, the, the economic um, sort of like ladder, that's basically where it's at. And they are incredibly price sensitive. So I'm going to sort of like go off, go, not go off topic, but how do we get to the price which made sense to them? So firstly, uh, this, this message has been endorsed by Mrs. Njoku. Um, but then I was in a supermarket. So one, I'm in a supermarket, that's really peculiar in Naples. So uh, Duex had this thing called Duex One. That's why I gave you this name, because my wife was okay with this. <laughs> so um, I saw this thing called Duex One. So it was right behind the counter. So there's like, you can buy like one Duex condom. At the same time, there was like a box of three uh, Duex condoms. This is 400 naira, this is 150 naira. This was selling. This wasn't. And it made no sense to me. I'm like, 150 naira, 400 naira. Yeah, breaking it down. So we said, actually, wait, hold on. Let's forget about monthly, quarterly, annually. Let's ha how do we do it weekly and, and, and daily? We couldn't do daily, but weekly. We now said, let's pick a number which we think that anybody could, could accept, which is you know, 100 naira, uh, 25 cents, like a can of Coke or, or, some, or, or a bottle of Coke. People started to spit that. 4,000 people a week started signing. We'd never seen this much growth ever before in, in, in Lagos. So these are people who, who have a smartphone, mm. who have access to internet, but that price insensitivity. And the thing is, they, on average, they are, they, are, they are paying two and a half times in a month, but that price point is what they're comfortable with. So if you think about this, previously, pay TV, where you can get all of this Nollywood content, is approximately $25. I'm now pricing access to the exact same thing at 25 cents. Mm. I'm doing no marketing, so it's not like people are coming, I'm sort of like trying to find, trying to like do all excitement. It's just that people who were going there anyway are now willing to pay. So I think when you think about disruption, you have to have that deflationary economic argument mm -hmm. in terms of how do you broaden the reach, and I think price is really important. Um, was that borne out, though, in going back to the investment question, was that borne out in the ones that were successful for you investment? So um, in Nigeria, we've largely failed. So in terms of everything we've tried, we've tried, we've spent millions of dollars trying to figure out that year and we failed. Mm -hmm. Firstly, the product was wrong. Then even the messaging had to be you know, uh, worked out. Our first version app had lots of words, so we realized that people didn't even uh, read these words, so we just took them all out. Um, so it's, it's making it so simple and the message is so clear. You know, sometimes you have things where you download five and then you, you have like a free trial. In the West, it's like a free trial. When we did free trial, it was free forever. They found a way to go around and around and around. <laughs> and we never, so we had to tell them to <laughs>